morning, everybody, and welcome to our online service for this Sunday. I just welcome you to this moment, and if you're visiting us from around the world, we pray that you feel part of our fellowship as we worship together today. Just a reminder to those of you who are local in Fishwick that we are meeting in person, live if you like, so if you want to come along and join us, please feel free to do that. It really is safe, and we're trying our best to keep it as safe as possible, probably even safer than going to the beach or shopping, so... Um, Give it a try sometime if you want to. Just please make sure you call the office so we can pre-register you and make sure we've got enough space for you. So I'm going to light the candle in a moment and say a prayer, and then we're going to follow that straight away with our reading today, which comes from Luke 24. So I will just make sure we light the candle. And I invite you, wherever you are, just to pause, be still. Maybe you can put your... Uh, telephone off or the sound off so it doesn't go off during our service and come let's pray dear lord jesus we pause this morning to remember your great love for us and the huge sacrifice you made for our salvation we are truly grateful that you willingly laid down your life for all humanity in a similar way we also pause to remember all people who have laid down their lives for the sake of others and for freedom peace and faith Many of these people have died during times of war, unrest, and persecution. May their memories live on, just as we remember your life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reading today is Luke 24, verses 1 to 8. Very early on Sunday morning, the woman went to the tomb, carrying the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb, so they went in, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They stood there puzzled about this, when suddenly two men in bright shining clothes stood by them. Full of fear, the woman bowed down to the ground as the men said to them, Why are you looking among the dead for one who is alive? He is not here. He has been raised. Remember what he said to you while he was in Galilee. The Son of Man must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and three days later rise to life. Then the woman remembered his words. That ends the reading. So having heard that scripture passage from Luke 24, I want to share a story with you, one that I heard many years ago, and I've remembered it even to this day. It's told about a man who well into his 70s would go every Friday evening to a pier along the coast of Florida. And he would walk slowly as he got older, carrying this bucket of shrimp. And as he got to the end of the pier, he would feed the seagulls that, as you know, seagulls, they would come whenever there is free food to be had. And this man was doing something that had really impacted upon his life many years previously and he was remembering something that had happened. This man's name was Captain Eddie Rickenbacher and what had happened is during the Second World War he and some of his colleagues were flying across the South Pacific and uh, their plane ran out of fuel and so they had to ditch their plane in the middle of the ocean and they had to fight not just the water and the sun but also huge sharks that were circling their, their raft. Their raft was about nine foot by five foot and they said sometimes the sharks were even bigger than their rafts, which is pretty hectic. Anyway, they had enough food and rations for about eight, nine days. And then when that had come to an end, they realized that they were probably not going to be saved. And so one of the other members of their, their crew, Captain William Cherry, actually led them through what we would call the last rites. They had a little service, they sang a hymn, and then they pulled their hats over their faces to protect them from the sun, and they really just lay there in the life draft waiting to die. Now, a few moments after this happened, um, Captain Eddie Rickenbacher remembers that there was this bird landed on his head. And he said it was such an amazing, surreal experience because they were 100 miles, if not more, out in the ocean, and there was no sign of birds whatsoever. But in this moment, this seagull landed on his head. And he kind of looked up from his doze and he saw the look in the eyes of his colleagues who were in the life raft. And as if they could all understand that this was potentially a miraculous moment for them. And so what happened is as quick as a flash, he managed to grab the bird 
And uh, for those of you who are a bit squeamish, I need to tell you, just maybe turn away for a moment. But, but they, they ate the bird and they had some leftover parts of the bird which they used as bait and they managed to catch some fish. Now that gift, that seagull, helped them to survive for another three weeks in that life raft. And so they saw it as a sign from God that one seagull, one random lone seagull, came to them in the middle of the ocean as a miraculous sign from God that helped them to survive. And in order to remember that bird, Captain Eddie Rickenbacher felt that it was his duty every Friday evening to walk to the end of that pier and to offer the family, if you like, of that seagull uh, free food. Now, it's a lovely story, and I believe it's a true story. But that story brings us into our theme for today, which is remembrance. So today in the church, we mark this Sunday as Remembrance Sunday. It is the Sunday that's the closest to the 11th of November, which is Remembrance Day. And we remember the end of the First World War and the Second World War. And in fact, this whole week has been about remembering past events. Um, I remember as a, as a child, Guy Fox, which is the 5th of November, um, always remembering that, that phrase, we go remember, remember the 5th of November, and we always looked forward to that. Um, the 9th of November is also the day we remember the Berlin Wall came crashing down, and obviously uh, Remembrance Day, the 11th of November. And so we, we remember these past events uh, to remember those who've passed on and for various different historical significance. Um, but it's important for us because it also helps us to look to the future. Now, as, as Christians, we, we remember other things that relate to the life of Jesus. Now, particularly when we come to moments like Holy Communion, there are words that we use in our, our service that are about looking backwards. And so let me just read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I think many of you know these words well, but it says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then it carries on through that passage to explain what we need to do. So even in the church, we have uh, symbols or sacraments that we do to remember the life of Jesus or past events. Now, there are various symbols, like you will know that on Remembrance Day, the, the red poppy is a very clear symbol of Remembrance Sunday. And, and we need to ask ourselves, what are we re remembering about those events? Take, for example, uh, Remembrance Day. Are we just remembering those soldiers who died in those great wars? Or are we also remembering the families that were torn apart by that violence? Are we remembering the children, the the women, the animals, just all the millions of people whose lives were totally turned upside down. Do we even go so far as to remember the enemy? Because often wars are, are seen only from our perspective and our side. Or do we remember that the enemy in any great conflict are also sons and daughters of family members and their worlds were, were really ripped, uh, ripped apart? And so when it comes to, to remembering, we, we must do it carefully, but also with great intention. And that is why today I want to speak about this topic of remembering. You know, John Newton, when uh, he had that amazing grace experience and he wrote Amazing Grace, he said, once I was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And so when we sing that hymn from John Newton, Amazing Grace, it should also take us back to a moment in our lives where we were lost, where we were without God, and so I think within the world in which we find ourselves, there are many moments, there are many symbols that can act as uh, moments of memory for us. And like I've mentioned a few of them, Guy Fox, Remembrance Day, the Berlin Wall, Holy Communion, we should use those wisely as we look back at what has happened. Now, the Christian commentator F.E. Marsh describes what we as Christians can do as we look back in time. And so I'm just going to mention a few of those. They come from the Old Testament. We should remember things that um, remind us that the Lord has delivered us from slavery, that the Lord has blessed us with many things, that the Lord has given us great victories, the Lord has given us encouragement in, in this journey of life. 
And so there are so many passages in the Old Testament that lead us up to Jesus. And when we look at Jesus, we should also remember what he has done, but also the promises that he has come to fulfill. Now, I want to take us to another passage today, which is from Hebrews chapter 11. Now, I haven't read this uh, for us because it's a very long chapter. It's over 40, 40 verses. But you, you would know, some of you would know this, but maybe some of you don't, that chapter 11 of Hebrews is what we would call the, the hall of fame, the role of honor of all the great Christians who had, had lived before the time that the letter of Hebrews was written. And uh, it's, a, it's an important for us because although the, some of their names are mentioned in, in quite a short space in this, this chapter, their stories are so powerful. Now, I remember um, a few years ago, we had the privilege of traveling to France and going to some of those battlefields where the First World War was fought. And uh, obviously, Delver Wood, as South Africans, is a quite an important place for us. And I remember walking around some of those graves and just having a look at the names of people that, if I'm honest, they didn't mean anything to me. They were just the name of, of a person. But each person's name, their date of birth and their death, has a huge story behind it. And the fact that many of them uh, died for their country and for a cause they believed in um, is very telling. Now, the same happens in Hebrews chapter 11 when we come to some very well-known people that are recorded in the pages of the Bible. Abraham uh, is obviously one of them, but Abel, Enoch, Noah are, are some of the first ones that come up in the early pages of the scriptures. Now, Abraham's an interesting one. Because we remember Abraham as an incredible man of faith. In fact, if I can just come to this verse, I'll show you. Verse 8, it says, yeah, It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and to go to another land. He also went there without knowing where he was going. And then when he reached the promised land, he lived there by faith. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise as Abraham. And what is interesting about Abraham is that we remember that he was led by God to go to this foreign land, and Abraham did this because he trusted in the promises that God had already given to him. Abraham remembered what God had done in the past. And then we come to that moment, which is not really recorded here in, in Hebrews 11, but we know if you go back and look in the Old Testament, that really hectic moment in Genesis where God says to Abraham, are you willing to sacrifice your son Isaac? Now, that story can really stump a lot of us because we think, well, Abraham and Sarah prayed for a long time for God to bless them with a child. God then gives them Isaac as a gift, and now God's asking them to sacrifice Isaac on, on the mountain. It just really seems that it doesn't make sense, does it? Now, we know, thankfully, when we read the story now, we know how it works out, and it's got a positive ending, but Abraham didn't know that at the time. And you begin to wonder to yourself, you know, what, what made Abraham follow through with that? Um, and, and I want to suggest today, perhaps it was some of those things I've just mentioned, that Abraham remembered what God had already done for him. That God was the God of miracles. That although when Abraham followed God into the, into the new land, he didn't know what that looked like, he trusted in God's promises. And I think that's also an important thing for you and I today as we remember things and even as we stand in this uncertainty of COVID is that let's remember God and in the mystery of who God is, but that God is faithful and that God is able to deliver us from situations that seem impossible. I love the image of, of the phoenix because it always reminds me that you know, out of the ashes, we can rise and there's many wonderful christian songs about that but it teaches us that god is the god of the resurrection that even in moments of darkness in moments where everything seems lost we don't know the way forward that we know that god is the one who's able to raise us up just as he raised jesus up that he's able to raise us up from those places of despair and i think maybe some of us watching today uh, have been feeling that, if not over the last couple of weeks, but over the last couple of months, where we are very much on edge. Despair has closed in around us. Perhaps that word from Abraham is a reminder to you and to myself today that if God is able to raise Jesus, if God is able to raise Lazarus, 
if God is able to miraculously provide the ram in the bush for Abraham, then God is surely able to do things for us that we can't even conceive of even, even today. I encourage you to keep reading through Hebrews 11 if you want to, because there's many other famous people. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Rahab, Gideon, Samson. I mean, there are so many of them. Um, I'm almost feeling bad that I'm leaving some of them out. But, but have a read of it. And the reason why I want you to read it is because I think each of us identifies with one or two biblical characters. There are one or two characters that that sometimes mean a lot more to us than the others. And it maybe has to do with our own circumstances or um, our own life experiences. But the reason why I ask you to identify that, that character, to remember that, that famous biblical character, is because it should do something for us. It should, number one, it should inspire us with hope that God was able to take that person, let's say Joshua or, or, or David, and able to use them in a way that they didn't even expect and that, that God was able to guide them into their futures. And not only to inspire us, but also to offer us hope for the present. Because for me, remembering is not just about a past experience, but it's about also remembering that we have a future. And there are also many passages in the scriptures that speak to us of that. I think Jeremiah 29, 11 is one of those I've mentioned before. And it's a, it's a pertinent reminder to us that God is not just only interested in what has been or what is now, but God is equally interested in what lies ahead for you and I. Now, many times, if you're like me, you want to know what that is. And uh, it's hard to live day by day. And I think COVID has really shown me again that we need to take each day as it comes. And Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, you know, give us this day our daily bread. In other words, Lord, give me enough sustenance and enough, enough strength for today because I'm going to need it for tomorrow. And so as we remember these things, we remember that God has been and God is and God will still be. Um, I found a couple of other commentaries that spoke about this and uh, let me just share some of their thoughts. And they spoke about how on this Remembrance Sunday, we would be wise to remember a few things. Here are, here are these things. That faith trusts God's promises even when they appear impossible. Faith fears no human being, only fears God. Faith perseveres even when there is no reward in sight. That's a hard one. Faith holds on a bit longer when all others have jumped ship. Faith inspires us when the world seeks to demoralize us. And I think David in Psalm 78 summed this up well, where he said, the people of God remembered their Lord, that he was their rock, their, the God most high was their redeemer. That's Psalm 78. And so friends, as you and I contemplate this day, this Remembrance Sunday, I ask you to do that. Look back, but look back also with the, the notion of looking forward. Now, I want to tell you another story that happened when Kim and I were traveling many years ago. Um, we got to travel through Nepal, and one of the, the beautiful treks we did in, in Nepal was in the Annapurna Sanctuary. Now, you end up, where you end up after about day eight or nine is at the foot of these majestic mountains. Now, Annapurna Base Camp is about 12,500 feet above sea level, and it's, that's epic in itself. But on the way to base camp, you, you climb a hill on about day three or four, depending on how quick you do it, which is about 9,000 feet. It's called Poon Hill. And I remember we've got a classic photograph of us standing there. The only reason why you climb Poon Hill on the trek is so that you get to see where you're going to be going. Because um, you, you start at about 2,000 feet and you, you walk 1,000 feet in the morning. You watch the sunrise. You look to where you're going and you can see Annapurna Base Camp. And then it, almost as soon as you got there, you take a few photos and then you turn around and you go back down again. Because you know you've got another four or five days before you even get to your destination. And I share that image, um, not to make you jealous about our traveling days, but just to, to share with us that in faith, sometimes that is what remembering is about. It's about 
climbing to a moment, and maybe even a Sunday time of worship is that for us, where we climb to this moment where we know we are in the presence of God, we can see where we've come from, but also God gives us a glimpse of what is to come. And, and that can mean different things for us. It can mean the prospect of a better tomorrow. For some of us, it may mean the, the, the gift of eternal life, whatever that is. But overall, it's hope that we can look forward to. And so as you stand here this day on this Remembrance Sunday, I'm asking you also to be encouraged by what lies ahead. We don't know what it is, but we need to trust that God is there. Just as God is with us here on this moment, on this Poon Hill moment, just as God has been with us in this last year, this crazy year of 2020, and so God will be with us as we carry on into the future. So friends, I encourage you, praise God for what has been, praise God for what we're experiencing now, but also thank God and trust Him for what is to come. And so I offer you those words today just as a word of encouragement, and uh, may you know God that is so close to you that he wants to guide you through everything that we are dealing with today. I want to close in a word of prayer, and so come, let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we celebrate this Remembrance Sunday, a moment in the history of the world where we remember great times of upheaval and stress, great times of conflict and war, we thank you that what we can remember today is that you gave your life for us. That Jesus, you laid down your life for those you loved and for us as your friends. And so that has given us a new hope and a new perspective to inspire us. We are mindful of families around the world, even this day, who are ripped apart by, by stress, by violence, by war, by all kinds of things, Lord God. And I know that your heart goes out to them. And so we offer a prayer for them and even for those that we may know of personally who are going through those kinds of moments. And Lord, we pray that as a church, we will continue to remember all that you've done for us and all that is to come. It is that hope that keeps us going. And thank you, Lord Jesus, lastly, that you are the God of yesterday, the God of today, and the God of tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So friends, one or two announcements before we go. Just remember that the children and the youth videos are online for you to watch. If you want to watch an extended version of the service, please do that on our webpage. And if you want to come to church next Sunday, give us a call and book your seats. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week.